Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Today we are going to discuss the questions, question paper. So that is a neat test question paper. So that is held on the 26th June. Okay, fine guys. So let us uh, talk about the biology question papers. Okay, fine. Okay, so let us go to the first question guys. The question is plasma membrane. Okay, what is a plasma membrane? You all know that, right? So where is the plasma membrane is present? The plasma membrane is a boundary to the cell, right? Yes. So they are telling that it option one they are telling has the phospholipid. Okay. Option two has a polar tails of the lipid. And option three has non-polar heads towards the cytoplasma. And option four has the protein towards the cytoplasmic surface only. So let us study the phospholipid structure first. Okay. Fine. So phospholipid is made up of the, we know that phospholipid is made up of the, sorry, uh, plasma membrane is made up of the phospholipid and it is made up of the integral protein and it is made up of the peripheral protein and glycoproteins are there, glycolipids are there, right? Yes. So it has the phospholipid. That is correct, right, guys? It has the phospholipid. So you can see this phospholipid. So here you can see the, this is a head, right? So head we will call it as a polar head. Okay. So polar head. Have you know what do you mean by polar head? Polar means hydrophilic, right? Yes. So the polar head, it is towards the exterior surface, okay, towards the exterior surface. So that's why it is a polar head, okay. So it is a hydrophilic. In the exterior surface, we can see the water molecule, right? So that's why, so the polar head is towards the exterior surface, okay. And here you can see polar, so this is the non-polar tail, okay, non-polar tail. So the non-polar tail is towards the, towards the inside, okay. So here you can see, so it is a bilipid layer, right? So phospholipid bilayer, so where? the tail will be exposed to the inside, okay? So, that's why, so the tail, we will call it as tail. Tail is the non-polar, okay? So, let us go to the option here, and here you can see integral protein, okay? So, these are proteins will be integrated between the two layer, okay? Two bilayer, the integral protein will be there, and in the outside also, we can see some protein. So, that we will call it as a peripheral protein, okay? So, where they will attach to the lipid layer, okay? So those things we will call it as the peripheral protein, peripheral proteins, okay? And so in the in, inner side, inner side also the protein will be attached in the cytoplasmic side also and on the peripheral side also, okay? So those, sorry, on the uh, extracellular surface also. Those proteins we will call it as a peripheral protein where they are not integrated inside the plasma membrane, right? So that is the reason, okay? So here you can see in the option one, so has the phospholipid, yes, it is has the phospholipid. Then coming to the option two, it has the polar tails of the lipid. No, guys, it is not the polar, it is a non-polar tails, okay? Non-polar tails, okay? So that's the reason option two is wrong. Then coming to the third, as the non-polar heads towards the cytoplasma. No, it is not towards the cytoplasma, okay? So it is towards the extracellular surface, extracellular surface, extracellular surface and towards the cytoplasma is also there. It has the non-polar heads. No, non-polar. So, heads are not the non-polar. So, heads are, head is polar head. Okay, head is polar. Why it is called as a polar, guys? It is made up of the phosphate. Okay, so it is made up of the phosphate. So, that's why it is called as a polar head. Okay, so whereas uh, tails, tails, why we will call it as the tails are the non-polar? So these are made up of the fatty acids, okay? So fatty acids, you know, those are the lipids. So that's why they are the non-polar. So, okay, fine. So that's why option uh, C is also, option third is also wrong. So then coming to the option four. Has the protein towards cytoplasmic surface only? No, guys. So whenever in the option, so there is, uh, the option will tell that only, only like that option, you think that that will be maybe wrong, okay? So, uh, so in all the so many questions, so that only uh, options will be wrong always. Okay. So let us see here. As the protein towards the cytoplasmic surface only. No, guys. So it is present in the integral membrane also and in the extracellular surface also there and in the intracellular. So that is in the cytoplasmic surface is also there. Okay. So that is the reason. So those protein we will call it as a peripheral protein. So that is not only present in the cytoplasma, it is present in the extracellular surface also and integral membrane also. So that's why this option is also wrong. So that's why the plasma membrane has the phospholipid. That is only the correct answer. 
Okay. The other options are wrong. Let us go to the next question. <laughs> Mark the incorrect about the virioids. Okay. So where you have seen this uh, question? Uh, where you have seen this about the virioids, guys? In the biological classification, right? Okay. So mark the incorrect about the virioids. Discovered by T. O. Denier. Yes, it is discovered by the T. O. Denier. That is correct. So here they are asking that incorrect statement. Okay. So then option two, RNA is of low molecular weight. Yes, guys. So that is also correct. Has the proteinaceous outermost coast? No. If it is a proteinaceous coat, is there means it may be a virus, right? No, guys. So when it comes to the virioid, so virioids are the small molecular weight RNA. These are small molecular weight RNA. Molecular weight. It is having the small molecular weight RNA. Okay. So there is no proteinaceous coat is there. Simply only RNA is there. Okay. So no protein. No protein coat. No protein coat is there. Only single. Only the RNA is there. So these RNA is infectious. Okay. It will cause the disease. Okay. Fine. So that's why option two is also correct. Then coming to the option three. Are the proteinaceous outermost coats? That is wrong. Smaller than the virus. Yes, guys. So it is smaller than the virus. So these are made up of only the RNA molecule. Okay. So this is also correct. The correct answer is third. So uh, what they are asking here? Incorrect statement, right? So that is the reason. So the third one is a wrong. Okay. Yes. So that is the correct answer for this question. Let us go to the third question. Pallade particle or the ribosome. What is this? Why it is called as a pallade? Pallade is nothing but the scientist guy. Okay. So he was uh, uh, discovered this ribosome. So that's why they are calling it the pallade particle. Okay. Fine. So let us go to the statement one. So which one is correct regarding this one? Okay. So regarding this all the statement, which statement is correct? You have to select the one correct one for this. Okay. Are made up of the RNA and protein? Yes, guys. It is made up of RNA and protein. Correct. Are the largest cell organs? No, guys. It is the smallest cell organ. Okay. So it is not the largest cell organ. It is the smallest cell organ, guys. Okay. Smallest cell organ. Okay. So then coming to the are found in eukaryote, but not in the prokaryote. You know, guys. The only cell organ which is present in both eukaryotes and both prokaryotes is the ribosome. Okay. Yes. They are found in the eukaryote, but not. No, it is present. Okay. So that's the reason this option is wrong. Okay. So then coming to the fourth option. Are the single membrane bound only? No, guys. When you are talking about the lysosome, lysosome is a single membrane bound. When you are talking about the ribosome, ribosome is not having any membrane. Okay. It is not having any membrane. It is a membrane lacking. Okay, guys. It is not having any membrane. So that's why option four is also wrong. Okay. So the correct answer is, so the ribosomes, the ribosomes are made up of RNA and protein. Okay. So that's why we'll call it as ribosomal RNA, right? R RNA, right? So it is made up of R RNA and proteins. So there are so many R RNA are there, right? So that is, uh, you know, that 5 is R RNA, 5.8 is R RNA and the 23 is R RNA and the, right? So these all are the R RNA, okay? So, whereas 23 S R R N A in the, so when you're talking about the 23 S R R N A, okay, so it is having the ribozyme activity. It will synthesize the protein in the bacteria. So, ribozyme activity, ribozyme activity means or ribozyme or we will call it as a peptidylase activity, okay. So, where it will synthesize the protein, synthesize protein, guys, okay. Then coming to the 28 is RNA. 28 is R RNA. So it is present in the, so where 23 is in the prokaryotes, okay? Prokaryotes, prokaryotes, okay? So coming to the 28 is R RNA, it is present in the eukaryotes, eukaryotes, where it is helpful in the synthesizing the protein in eukaryotes only, okay? Synthesizing the protein. It is helps in the synthesizing protein in eukaryotes only. Okay, guys. So remember, guys, in the question, if they ask me, which is the RRNA, which is helps in the synthesis of the protein. So that is nothing but in the prokaryote, it is 23 S RNA. When it comes to the uh, uh, eukaryote, so that is the 28 S RRNA. Okay, remember. Fine. So let us go to the fourth question. 
egg apparatus as the three cells number of the egg cells in its are dash and with the ploidy level is dash okay so whenever you are talking about the egg cells okay egg apparatus in the plant okay so you know guys you know that right so it is made up of the seven cells right seven cells eight nucleated eight nucleated we will tell right here you can see in the egg apparatus if you take if you take the egg apparatus here you can take the egg okay so here you can take the two synergid cells okay two synergid cells so what they are asking here the egg apparatus are the three cells right one is the egg cell and two is the synergids right so one is egg one is egg and two synergids two synergids are there you know what is the function of synergids right guys so it will helps in the attract it will attract the pollen grain okay pollen tube pollen tube formation will take place from the micropylar end right so it will attract the pollen tube which is one that is a synergid okay so here you can see so the number of the egg cells in its are so how many egg cells are there one okay so one egg cell is there right in the three egg cell apparatus if you take these three egg apparatus means only one egg cell is there right only one egg cell is there so that is one and coming to the uh, number so that is haploid okay so that is a haploid in nature not a diploid right so when the uh, egg is having the haploid structure so where the sperm uh, sperm will come and uh, come and do the fertilization where syngamy will happen so there so the fertilization will happen so there it will fuse to form the 2n so that is a zygote right so that is why so the third one is correct guys okay so the egg apparatus the only one egg is there so that is in the haploid okay so that is the haploid so that's why option 3 is correct for this okay fine let us go to the next question mark the incorrect about photosystem 2 okay so what they are asking that uh, photosystem 2 where you can see this photosystem 2 guys in the photosynthesis so that in the thylakoid in the plants right yes so let us see found on the inner surface of the thylakoid membrane yes so it is found on the thylakoid membrane inner surface of the thylakoid membrane so here you can see so this is the inner membrane of the thylakoid membrane here you can see the photosystem 2 that is correct right let us go to the second is involved in non cyclic photophosphorylation yes guys when you are talking about the non cyclic photophosphorylation so here both the photosystem is involved right so here both the photosystems are involved so that is the photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 both are involved okay so that is also correct so then coming to the evolves the o2 yes guys so how the o2 evolution is going to be happen so O2 evolution is going to be happen in the thylakoid right thylakoid lumen right in the thylakoid lumen where water is going to be split out right when the water was split out so where two proton and the two electron is going to be released two electron will be transferred into the electron transport chain right so where o2 was released and it will be diffuses out right so then proton was released in the thylakoid lumen only where it is increases the ph in the thylakoid lumen right yes so that is why o2 evolved yes guys o2 evolution was happen in the photosystem 2 only okay guys for example any inhibitors okay so any inhibitors inhibit the photosystem 2 means so there is no evolution of the o2 is going to be happen okay so that is the reason so this option 3 is also correct so then coming to the option 4 as an absorption maximum of 700 nanometer i will pause here think guys is that correct no right yes so it has the absorption maximum so that is 680 nanometer right so this absorption maximum 700 is for the photosystem one right so where photosystem two is having the absorption maximum 680 nanometer 680 nanometer right guys so that is the reason which one is incorrect yes guys so the fourth one is incorrect right so other things are correct statement related to the photosystem too okay guys fine so let us go to the sixth question select the incorrect statement about the phyto hormones okay you have to select the incorrect means what three are correct here right three are correct whereas the one is incorrect in correct okay guys let us search for the incorrect okay oxygen is generally produced by growing apices of the stem yes guys so if you take the growing apices 
so the oxygen will be higher right so this is the reason it will cause the apical dominance right apical dominance apical dominance right guys yes so oxygen is generally produced by the growing apices of the stem that is correct kinetin does not act uh, does not occur naturally in the plant yes guys so where the first uh, cytokinin was uh, uh, discovered guys so in the coconut milk right so that is a zeatin right yes so then kinetin does not occur naturally in the plant yes guys so that is also correct whereas zeatin is going to be present okay zeatin we have discovered from the coconut milk okay coconut milk okay guys so that's the reason option 2 is also correct ethylene is simple gaseous plant growth regulator yes guys so this is very simple and it is a gaseous hormone that we all know that right that is also correct so then coming to the aba abscinic acid always promote the seed germination no guys you all know that right so it is a dormitory hormone right it will not produce it will not promote the seed germination right so this is a wrong so it is a aba is a dormant hormone right so it is the dormancy hormone dormancy hormone right guys so that is the reason option 4 option 4 is the correct answer for this because it is a incorrect right so those all the options are correct relating to the phyto hormone so that's why option 4 option 4 is the correct answer for this okay fine so let us go to the next question <laughs> select the incorrect about the thalassemia okay so you all know that what is the thalassemia right guys so what is the thalassemia thalassemia is nothing but it is a mendelian disorder right mendelian disorder so what do you mean by mendelian disorder guys if any mutation is happen in the gene so it is a transmitted to the so next generation so those thing we will call it as a mendelian disorder right yes so it will comes under the mendelian disorder so what they are telling in the first statement autosomal recessive so, uh, always remember guys so thalassemia is the blood disease okay so it is related to the blood you all know that right autosomal recessive disorder yes guys it is a autosomal recessive disorder that is correct statement then coming to the option 2 in the alpha thalassemia the production of the alpha globulin is affected yes guys so there are two types of the uh, thalassemia right one is alpha and another one is the beta so is the alpha chain you all know that right so the hemoglobin hemoglobin is made up of the two chains right one is alpha and the beta so it is tetramer you know that right so two alpha and two beta chain will be there right so in the hemoglobin hemoglobin right guys so hemoglobin we will tell that quaternary structure right quaternary structure so this is example for the quaternary structure quaternary structure of the protein right in the biomolecules they have studied about the protein right yes so hemoglobin is having the quaternary structure with the two alpha and the two beta so if the two also the even here the alpha chain was not producing correctly so then it will leads to the alpha thalassemia right so if the beta chain was not producing correctly so then it will leads to the beta thalassemia okay fine so where is then this uh, alpha chain is going to be present alpha gene so alpha chain is produced by the two genes guys okay so one we will call it as yeah so here one we will call it as aba1 and aba2 that is one minute yeah so aba1 and aba2 genes so where it is present on the chromosome number 16 okay so it is going to be present on the chromosome number 16 okay so whereas beta beta is produced by only single chain so that is a hbb so that is produced by only hba sorry guys hba okay hba okay so hbb gene so where it is going to be present only on the chromosome number 11 chromosome number 11 okay guys chromosome number 11 so where it is having the gene hbb so that will produce the beta chain whereas the chromosome number 16 having the two genes so that is hba1 and hba2 it is going to produce the alpha chain okay so if it is affected if the mutation was happen in the hba gene hba1 or hba2 it will give the alpha thalassemia if the mutation was happen to the hbb gene 
so then the beta chain will be not produced correctly so then it will leads to the so what beta thalassemia right okay so then option 2 is telling in alpha thalassemia the production of the alpha globulin chain is affected that is correct in the beta thalassemia is controlled by the single gene hbb on the chromosome that is also correct then which is the incorrect one layers fourth one is the incorrect let us study about that it is a qualitative problem of synthesizing an incorrectly functioning globulin no guys it is not a qualitative okay so if a qualitative means so that is a disorder of sickle cell anemia okay qualitative is sickle cell anemia so when we are talking about the uh, thalassemia it is a quantitative where quantity of the alpha chain and quantity of the beta chain is not going to be produced right it is a quantitative disorder okay so it is quantitative quantity say quantitative okay guys it is not about the qualitative okay so that is the reason option 4 is the correct reason for option 4 is the correct for this because it is a incorrect statement okay so other statements are correct okay so other statements are correct so that's the reason so the correct answer is fourth one okay fine so i think you understood this let us go to the next question so dna dependent dna polymerase so where you have studied this guys in the molecular basis of inheritance right yes so so where you have studied this enzyme that is in replication guys dna polymerase in the replication okay so let us see which one is the correct <laughs> can initiate the process of replication no guys no so it is a wrong right some people will think that yes ma'am it will initiate no 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 guys no rna polymerase is going to be initiate right because it will synthesize the primer right rna polymerase rna polymerase will initiate the replication because it will synthesize the primer because it will synthesize the primer right primer you know that it is made up of the rna that's why rna polymerase is required for this right so that's the reason option 1 is wrong so then coming to the option 2 cannot work without the dna ligase why it is required the dna ligase guys no it is wrong option then coming to the option 3 catalyze the polymerization in only one direction have you think guys so recall so it will synthesize the dna poly so dna polymerase will synthesize the dna in only one direction right so that is 5 prime to 3 prime direction right so it always synthesize the dna in 5 prime to 3 prime direction right so that is the correct reason so whereas both 1 and 3 is wrong so that's the reason option 3 is a correct right other options are wrong option 3 is correct answer where it will catalyze the polymerization in only one direction so that is the 5 prime to 3 prime okay guys fine so let us go to the next question the size of the vntr what do you mean by vntr guys so variable variable number variable number tandem right tandem repeat variable number tandem repeat right guys where you studied this i think you studied this in the dna fingerprinting right guys dna fingerprinting mini satellite you have studied right yes so other than where you have studied guys so in the where yes in the genome in the human genome project right yes guys so it is of the size from 2 to 3 base pair no guys 30 to 50 base pair no 0.1 to 20 kilo base pair yes guys so the third option is correct so it is having 0.1 to 20 kilo base pair okay so not 1 to 6 base pair also okay so the correct answer is option 3 okay fine so let us go to the next question <laughs> select the incorrect about saccharum barberi so saccharum barberi okay so let us study about this guys so i think you have studied about this in the so tissue culture right sorry um, in the breeding of the plants right in the plant breeding you have studied about this so let us study about the incorrect statement okay so was originally grown in the north india yes guys so this uh, saccharum barberi saccharum barberi is nothing but sugar cane okay it is a sugar cane it was uh, produced it was originally grown in the north india okay so yes it was originally grown in north india yes correct 
had a poor sugar content yes guys it is having the poor sugar content and had poor yield also that is also correct okay has thicker stem than the saccharomyces officinarum ma'am what is this saccharomyces officinarum i will tell you guys so this is grown in the south india okay so this was grown in south india it was originally grown in the south india okay so this saccharum officinarum is having the high sugar content okay guys it is having the high sugar content and it is having thick thick stem also it is having thick stem also okay but it was originally grown in south india okay if we take this yield if we take the this species and we have to grow in the north india mean it is not going to be grow there okay so that is the reason what they have did is they have crossed it between saccharum barberi and saccharum officinarum okay because when we cross these two variety so then it will grow in the north india okay so after this crossing yield so then we have used that so then it is giving the very thick uh, it is giving the good yield also and it is it is uh, having the thick stem also and it is giving the good sugar content also okay so we have crossed it between the saccharum barberi and the saccharum officinarum okay so here they are telling that has the thicker stem than the saccharum officinarum no guys it is having the thin okay it is having the thin stem it is having the thin stem okay so whereas our saccharum officinarum having the thick stem okay saccharum officinarum having the thick stem okay guys so that is the reason so option 4 is incorrect okay option 4 is incorrect so that's why it is the correct answer so when you coming about the saccharum barberi it is originally grown in north india it is having the low sugar content and having the poor yield okay so that's why we cross it and now we are getting the good yield because we are having the crossed products of this saccharum officinarum and the saccharum barberi okay fine so i think you understood this so other options are wrong so let us go to the next question guys yes okay <laughs> so option uh, yeah so here you have to uh, you have to choose the correct one okay so polycystronic structural gene is regulated by common promoter and the regulatory gene so let us think guys so where is this polycystronic genes you can see only in bacteria right guys so it is not going to be present in the eukaryotes right so what do you mean by polycystronic uh, gene means so here you can see single promoter will be there okay and single operator will be there okay so where it is going to be operate more than one gene okay so you have seen in the lac operon in the tryptophan operon right guys so in the lac operon what will happen lac z gene is there lac y gene is there and lac a gene is there right so this three gene is controlled by single promoter so that is a single promoter so where these three genes are controlled right so that's why we will call it as polycystronic poly cystronic cystron means what cystron means gene right yes so then coming to the monocystronic monocystronic where we can see the monocystronic guys yes in the eukaryote we can see the monocystronic right where single promoter is there single operator is there where it is controlling only one gene right where it is controlling only one gene right so this monocystronic we can see in the eukaryotes right guys in the you carry yours we can see this right so let us study what they are given here okay polycystonic structural gene is regulated by common promoter and the regulatory gene yes guys common promoter and the regulatory gene if you see the uh, if you see the lac operon here there is a one gene is there okay so here uh, lac i gene that is lac i gene is there right so where it will give the so that is lac i gene is controlled to the so operator gene right so where it will produce the inhibitor so where it will come and bind to this operator gene so where the where the gene is going to be off right so where the rna polymerase cannot synthesize this lac y lac z y and a gene so that's why it is going to be in the inhibitor condition it will off the gene right on that condition so yes it was so here is the promoter and here the lac gene is uh, lac i gene is there yes so it is controlled by the common promoter and the common regulatory gene yes guys so if the inhibitor come and bind to this operator gene means so 
lag why is gene is also not going to be synthesized lag sorry lag z is not synthesizing lag y is also not synthesizing and lag z is also not going to be synthesized right yes so it is regulated by the single promoter and the regulatory gene so that is correct it is seen in the bacteria yes guys it is seen in the bacteria so then they are telling the above statements are true for that both the statements are true only okay so it is true for which condition they are asking so tryptophan operon and lac operon and in the third they are telling that genes code for the rubisco in the wolfia so the correct answer is both 1 and 2 guys okay both 1 and 2 right fourth option is correct okay so then coming to the tryptophan operon also we can see and the lac operon also we can see okay so whereas gene code for the rubisco in the wolfia so where the rubisco you can see guys rubisco rubisco was the largest protein right so it was the largest protein in the world so where it is present in the eukaryotes so that is in the plants right yes so that's the reason this option is wrong guys okay so both 1 and 2 are correct so that's the reason option 4 is correct okay fine i think you understood this let us go to the next okay read the following statement and select the correct option okay so you have to select the correct option here statement 1 good ozone is found in upper part of the atmosphere okay so where you can see the good ozone guys so good ozone you can see in the stratosphere right stratosphere okay so where this good ozone will so it will protect the earth from the uv rays right it will protect protect earth protect earth from earth from uv rays right guys yes so then coming to the that statement was correct and do you know what do you mean by bad ozone guys bad ozone bad ozone bad ozone was present in the troposphere 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 okay so about the 6 miles it will be there okay about 6 miles will be there so it is consisting of the the fog and the so the pollution which is coming from the earth okay so that is about the bad ozone okay so that is present in the troposphere but here we are talking about the here we are talking about the good ozone so that is present in the troposphere and found in the upper part of the atmosphere yes that is correct reason then coming to the statement 2 chlorofluorocarbon in the stratosphere as the permanent and the continuing effect on the ozone level yes guys so it is having the permanent and the continuing effect on the ozone level yes guys so where it will create the pores in the ozone okay so where you will get the uh, chlorofluorocarbon so in the uh, in the home you are using using the refrigerators and all the things right from that chlorofluorocarbon will be emerging so where it will cause the greenhouse effect also right so chlorofluorocarbon will cause the greenhouse effect also and it will affect the ozone layer okay it will create the pores in the ozone layer okay so that's why both the statements are correct guys okay both the statements are correct okay fine so there are the other options are wrong okay fine let us go to the here you can see the diagram so here in the troposphere in the sorry in the stratosphere you can see the good ozone so that is the protecting the ozone from the uv rays right so here you can see the troposphere in the troposphere you can see the bad ozone okay so where it will be the pollution which is coming from the earth so that is we will call it as a troposphere okay so that we will call it as a bad ozone fine guys let us go to the next question all of the following features are related with the cyclostrom except okay so which one is wrong okay fine let us go to the first statement cyclostrom you know that guys what is a cyclostrom cyclostrom we know that that egnatha right egnatha so egnatha very good so what is that another thing egnatha yes jawless fishes right jawless fishes right guys yes so the presence of 16 to 16 to sorry 6 to 15 pair of the gills no guys there is no pairs are present no pair of the gills are present here we can see 16 6 to 15 gill slits okay gill slits are present so these are the gill slits not the gills here you can see the structure so this is the egnatha okay 
so here you can see the gill slits okay it may be 6 to 15 gill slits will be present okay so these are the gill slits okay and here you can see the mouth mouth is of the sucking type right it will sucking type of the mouth is present right yes and the body is devoid of the scales and the fins yes guys so here the body does not contain any type of the scales and the fins that is also correct so then coming to the option third presence of closer type of the circulation yes guys so here in the ignata we can see the closer type of the circulation okay so why we are calling as the uh, closer type of the circulation yes so presence of the closer type of the circulation that is correct they have sucking and circular mouth yeah they are having the sucking and the circular mouth without the jaws yes guys so here only i have told you that it is having the sucking and the sucking type of the mouth yes so that is the correct okay so that's the reason option 1 is the correct answer for this okay so it is not having the pair of the gills it is having the gill slit okay so other options are wrong guys okay fine so let us go to the next question <laughs> choose the incorrect match okay so here you have to choose the incorrect one so loose loose connective tissue okay the most abundant and widely distributed in the body of the complex animal right guys yes guys so the loose connective tissue what do you mean by loose connective tissue guys you can give the example of the uh, blood right yes blood is a loose connective tissue and you can take the tendons tendons and ligaments right so these are the loose connective tissue okay fine so the most abundant and widely distributed in the body of the complex animals yes so that is correct then coming to the second one cartilage so the matrix is a solid and pliable and resist the compression yes guys so when you are talking about the cartilage so this will form the ground tissue okay ground tissue so these are the matrices solid and pliable and resist to the compression so that is also correct so then coming to the option 3 so the glycogen left end is considered as a reducing end and having the right side of the branching no guys so left end is not considered as a reducing end okay so whereas right hand right end okay right hand is considered as the reducing end okay reducing end okay so here you can see the structure so this is the left end so here it is the right hand okay so the glycogen right hand is considered as the reducing end reducing okay fine so you can because it is having the oh group right free oh group is there so that's why it is a, it is a, called as a reducing end for example if you take this starch they may give you uh, the question like this the starch which is having the 1000 glucose molecule okay so 1000 glucose molecule how many reducing end is there okay guys only one reducing end is there because only one oh group is free right yes so that's why the right side end so which is having the free end so that is only having the one so the 1000 also if it is having the 20000 also the last so the last glucose is having the reducing end okay remember that guys okay fine not the left end so that's why the incorrect option is third one okay so then coming to the fourth one brush border epithelium where you can see the brush border epithelium guys you have seen that in the intestine right so where that is helpful in the absorption right so increase the absorbed surface area in the proximal convoluted tubule and in the intestine yes so that is the correct so here they are asking that incorrect right so that is the reason third one is a incorrect right so the right end is having the reducing end not the left end okay guys fine so let us go to the next question so choose the incorrect statement so the energy level of the product is more than the energy level of the reactant in the exothermic reaction so when you are talking about the exothermic reaction uh, in the exothermic reaction you know that right guys the energy is going to be released right so in the exothermic reaction energy is going to be released energy is released one minute yes so energy is released here right so if the energy is releasing means 
the obviously the reactant is having the more energy right so if you for example a and b are the reactants and it is going to it is going to give the product right so here energy is going to be released out means the product is having the less energy right guys yes so here the reactants reactants is having the more energy whereas the product is having the less energy okay what they are given in the statement energy level of the product is more than the energy level of the reactant no guys so energy of the product is less than that of the reactant okay so that is the reason so they are asking the incorrect statement so option 1 is only correct okay so let us go to the second cofactors are non protein substances and attached with the apo enzyme so have you know, know this guys so enzyme it may bind with the cofactor and the coenzyme right so co enzymes are there coenzymes right and the cofactors co factors are there right what do you mean by coenzymes guys the coenzymes will be made up of the pro uh, coenzymes are made up of the vitamins right it is made up of the vitamins when you are talking about the cofactors cofactors are made up of the minerals minerals okay example you can take the iron right and you can take the zinc right so you you can take the zn right sorry zn only zinc right one minute yeah zinc and you can take the any other like the iron zinc is over so then you can take the phosphorus phosphorus and molybdenum molybdenum right guys so these all are act as a cofactor you all know that right so our nitrogenase enzyme nitrogenase enzyme is having the molybdenum and the iron as the cofactors right so here they are giving the enzyme so that is a carboxypeptidase okay carboxypeptidase so that is having the cofactor that is the zinc okay fine let us see the statement here the cofactor are non protein substances and attached with the apo enzyme right guys what is this apo enzyme guys apo enzyme is a protein part protein part of the enzyme right apo enzyme is a protein part of the enzyme yes so the cofactor are non protein that is a correct statement right okay the efficiency of enzyme is represented by its turnover number right guys yes so if uh, if i uh, if we are telling any enzyme that is a efficient means so that is having the turnover number that is having the more turnover number means it is a more efficient okay and fine and you know guys so there will be a given the km also michael is maintained right michael is maintained constant we will tell that km okay michael is maintained michael is maintained in the michael is maintained what will happen if the any enzyme guys is the enzyme is the enzyme having is the enzyme is having low km okay low km means it is having a high affinity for the substrate okay it is having high affinity for the substrate high affinity okay if it is having the high km value if it is having the high km value if it is having the high km value means what it is having the low affinity for the substrate low affinity for substrate okay remember this guys in one of the neat exam they have asked this question that's why i am telling okay fine so here you can see the efficiency of the enzyme is represented by its turnover number that is correct reason then coming to the fourth zinc is cofactor which form coordination bond with the both active site of the enzyme carboxypeptidase and the substrate protein right guys where you studied about the carboxypeptidase in the digestion right so where carboxypeptidase is helping in the digestion of the protein right guys yes so here the cofactor is the zinc that is the correct statement okay guys so which is the incorrect here the first statement is the incorrect that is related to the enzyme okay fine guys so the first one is the correct answer whereas the other statements are correct so that's why this is the wrong okay fine so let us go to the next question 16th one spinactor of od so this is also from the chapter digestion spinactor of the od present at the opening opening of the hepatopancreatic duct 
so remember guys so here only the answer is given right so it is present in the opening of the hepato pancreatic hepato means what guys in the liver right hepato means what liver right pancreatic means you know that pancreas regulate the release of which one of the following secretion in the duodenum okay let us go to the first one let us go to the diagram first here you can see so here this is a hepato pancreatic duct okay hepato pancreatic duct so that is a spin actor of the od okay so spin actor of the od so here you can see spin actor of od here so here it is have here it is collecting the juice here it is collecting the juice from so gall bladder also it is a gall bladder guys right so bile juice bile juice which is secreted from the liver okay so where it is stored it was stored in the gall bladder right from the gall bladder it is reaching to the duodenum right so here you can see from the duodenum it is coming sorry from the gall bladder it is coming and so here you can see the pancreatic juice it is coming from the pancreas right here you can see so here there is a spin actor of od is there so where it is controlling the juice which is coming from the gall bladder also and from the pancreas also right yes so that's why only in the pancreatic juice no only in the bile juice no both pancreatic and the bile juice yes guys so that is the correct third one is the correct answer so coming to the secretion of the sucus entericus sucus entericus is nothing out from nothing so that is the secretion from small intestine secretion from small intestine small intestine so small intestine will also secrete some of the peptidase enzyme okay so that will be uh, so that will be helpful for the digestion of the protein okay so that you sucus entericus is the secretion from the small intestine okay guys so this is also not the correct answer the correct answer is where the hepato pancreatic duct so that is spin actor uh, spin actor of od so will be so so that will regulate the the juice which is coming from both from the gall bladder and also from the pancreas okay guys <clears throat> okay let us go to the next question read the following statement a and b and choose the correct option with respect to the nephron in the human kidney okay fine so let us go to the statement number 1 <clears throat> potassium ion are reabsorbed as well as secreted in the proximal convoluted tubule someone will think that ma'am how come the reabsorption will also take place and the secretion will also take place in some condition in some condition the reabsorption and secretion will also take place okay yes guys so the potassium ion in some condition it will be reabsorbed and in some condition it will be secreted in the proximal convoluted tubule okay so whenever the potassium ion concentration was more than that of the than that of the limited so on that time what will happen so the, if the more potassium ion concentration is there means it will be secreted in the urine okay so when potassium ion concentration was less on the time what will happen it will be reabsorbed okay it will be reabsorbed so that's why so the correct statement so the statement one is correct potassium ion is reabsorbed as well as the secreted okay that is correct so counter current mechanism helps to maintain concentration gradient in the medullary interstitium that is correct okay so it is helpful in the maintaining the concentration gradient in the medullary interstitium right guys that is correct by increasing the absorption of urea from distal convoluted tubule no guys not from the distal convoluted tubule so it is from the collecting duct okay it is from the collecting duct collecting duct okay so that's the reason option b is a wrong it's only statement one is correct sorry statement b is wrong whereas the statement one is correct okay so let us go to the statements here both the statement a and b are correct no option sorry the statement number b is wrong both statement a and b are incorrect no statement a is correct only statement a is correct only statement a is correct only only b statement is incorrect so we can give the both the answer guys right so no no here you are can telling that only statement a is incorrect no a is correct right that is wrong so then coming to the option 4 only statement b is incorrect yes guys only b is incorrect here right so that's why option 4 is correct answer okay yes so whereas the other options are wrong okay so it will be 
so where it will really absorption will take place from the distal convoluted tubule okay okay let us go to the 18th question select the incorrect statement so we have to select the incorrect here okay means what three are correct right so three are correct here ye haploid parent produces a gamete by the mitotic division yes guys so when we are talking about the gametophytic stage okay gametophytic stage gametophytic stage so here the parent will be in the haploid stage right so there what will happen so here so the here the mitosis will be happen to produce the gamete so that is correct okay so it may be example for the algae okay in the algae it will happen okay fine so let us go to the second statement zygote is a vital link that ensures the continuity of the species between the organism of the one generation to the next generation yes guys so that is also correct then coming to the option 3 events in the sexual reproduction in the sexual reproduction you can see that so there will be a post fertilization will be there and the pre fertilization will be there okay so in the pre fertilization what will happen guys so the gametes will be produced right in the pre fertilization so after the post fertilization what will happen post post fertilization where the uh, zygote will be formed and where the division will be happen right so here what they are giving in the third option event in the sexual reproduction before the forming of the zygote they are asking before forming remember guys before formation before formation there will be a pre we will call it as pre pre means what before right pre fertilization will be happen pre fertilization event will be happen right before okay so after what will happen so after post fertilization will happen right post fertilization fertilization event right so that is nothing but zygote it will form the zygote right guys and it will form the cleavage cleavage right in the option 3 they are telling events in the sexual reproduction before before formation of zygote is called post fertilization event no guys so that we will call it as pre fertilization event that is wrong we will call it as pre fertilization event right so then coming to the option 4 they are telling in both parents in the both plants and animal interaction between hormone and certain environmental factor regulate the reproductive process yes guys so in the plant we have seen that photoperiodism right so yes in the photoperiodism so there is a hormonal uh, so hormone will related to the rat so it will lead to the flowering right yes so here you can see in the uh, when it come to, uh, when it come to the animals also where hormones will give the so hormones will regulate the reproductive cycle right guys so yes so that's the reason option 4 is correct so then coming to the option 3 so that is wrong right so but here they are asking that incorrect statement so that is the reason option one minute guys sorry yeah so that is the reason option 3 is a correct statement whereas the other statements are wrong right guys okay so let us go to the next question select the correct match meiosite so uh, here they are telling the correct statement okay means what three are incorrect right three are incorrect here right so one is correct okay let us choose which one is the correct meiosite haploid cell which undergo the meiosis no guys so it is not a haploid cell so where diploid cell okay so diploid cell which undergo the meiosis and it will give the gametes right it will give the gametes so that we will call it as a meiosite meiosite is a diploid not the haploid okay fine so that's the reason so it is a incorrect okay so then come into the gametogenesis what do you mean by gametogenesis formation of the gamete mother cell no guys not a gamete mother cell gametogenesis means formation of the gametes okay so where gamete mother cell is a 2n diploid okay so gamete mother cell is a diploid where gamete mother cell will undergo the meiosis okay will undergo the meiosis will produce the haploid daughter cell haploid daughter cell haploid daughter cell so that we will call it as a gametogenesis right so here mother is there uh, so we will call it as a micropore sorry we will call it as the micro 
uh, we will call it as a megaspore mother cell right megaspore mother cell megaspore mother cell megaspore mother cell we will call it as mother cell right so where mmc right mmc we will call it as right so where it will undergo the meiosis to produce the four cells right so those are haploid right so where mother cell is the 2ne number diploid right guys okay so that's the reason gametogenesis is nothing but the production of gametes production of gametes right guys so that's why this option is also wrong this option is also wrong so then coming to the option 3 parturition implantation and the embryonic development no guys so that is wrong right what do you mean by parturition giving birth to the egg one giving birth to egg one so that we will call it as a parturition right so that's the reason option 3 is also wrong coming to the fertilization fusion of the male and female gamete to form the diploid zygote yes guys so male gamete is there female gamete is there male and female gamete is there where it will form the single cell that is the zygote zygote right by the fertilization you all know that right yes so that's why option 4 is the correct statement okay yes that is a correct others are wrong let us go to the our last question uh, sorry this is go to the 20th question match the item in the column 1 to the column 2 so let us go to here so option 1 is telling window period what do you mean by window period guys so it is nothing but when the person got the hiv if he got the hiv so till when he is infected so he is infected sometime okay so when he was infected when he started to showing the symptom okay that the gap between days is right so that we will call it as the window period window period means what so when he is affected for example he is affected this this time so and so he started to showing the symptom okay he started to showing the symptom this time so after these days after this days okay so after days okay so this period right this period is there right so that period we will call it as a window period window period okay right let us go to the the time lag between the infection and the appearance of the aids symptom so is infected and he started to showing the symptom after so many days okay so when the infect when the symptoms was started right that the time period between the infection to the symptom so that we will call it as window period <clears throat> okay guys so then for the a what will happen 3 is correct then coming to the contact inhibition contact inhibition is a property of cancer cell right so here you can see by virtue of which contact with the other cell inhibits the uncontrolled growth okay yes so if you take the cancer cell if you studying about the cancer cell and if you start to growing in the laboratory condition what will happen so the cancer cell one is there so when it is come in contact with the other cell also it is started growing okay so it is started growing okay so that we will call it as a contact inhibition okay so contact inhibition by virtue of which the contact with the other cell inhibit the uncontrolled growth so we can see that contact inhibition is a, a contact inhibition we can see in the normal cells normal cells okay so but the contact inhibition is lack in the cancer cell contact inhibition inhibition is lack in cancer cell lack in cancer cell what will happen in the cancer cell i have told you now so when you take the any cancer cell and if you start growing in the laboratory in the media so this is the media guys media means what you know that right media means so it is having the all the media it is having the all the content for example protein and the glucose and everything for the growth okay so here what will happen so one cell is growing okay so if it is come in contact with the other cell so then also it will started growing okay so start dividing okay so that we will call it as a contact inhibition so but in the normal cell what will happen so if it is in comes if it's a one cell is growing there is another cell is there when it comes in contact with the another cell it stop growing it will not grow okay 
but it is just opposite in the cancer cell it is start growing okay fine so this is in the normal cells in the normal cells we can see the contact inhibition property okay so that's why option 4 is correct by virtue of which contact with the other cell inhibit their uncontrolled growth okay that's why option 4 is correct for this then carcinogen you know that so which cause the cancer right yes so ionizing and the non ionizing radiation this is the correct answer guys so option 3 sorry option 2 is correct for the c you know that ionizing radiations are those x ray x ray and the gamma rays are coming to the ionizing radiation so then coming to the non ionizing radiation you can see the uv rays right guys so ionizing radiation will be the sorry ionizing radiation will be the x ray x ray and gamma rays okay so then coming to the non ionizing radiation you can see the uv rays it will cause the cancer right carcinogen in the carcinogen there is a physical carcinogens will be the ionizing and the non ionizing radiation if they are talking about the uh, if they are talking about the chemical carcinogens which are the chemical carcinogens guys tobacco and ethidium bromide so these are the chemical carcinogens okay fine so that's why it is option 2 is correct then coming to the alpha interferon so those are those are the biological modifiers okay interferon so that is why option for the d is the one statement so then you can come to the fourth option fourth option is correct so where a3 is there and b2 is there so one minute sorry b one minute b contact inhibition one minute so 3 4 2 1 3 4 2 1 option 3 is the correct answer right not the option 4 not option 1 and not option 2 okay right one minute window period so window period is the time lag between the infection that is correct and coming to the contact inhibition contact inhibition is the fourth where by virtue of the other cell it is not going to be grow then coming to the option 3 carcinogens where ionizing and the non ionizing radiation and alpha interferon that is a one okay so that's the reason option one is a correct answer for this okay fine other options are wrong then coming to the 21st question heat shock method in the bacterial transformation facilitate you know what is a bacterial transformation right guys so where the gene is going to be where the naked gene where the naked gene is going to be transported so transported inside the bacterial cell right so binding of the dna to the cell wall by the ester bond no guys it is not going to be correct answer so then coming to the option 2 uptake of the dna through the membrane transport protein no that is also not correct so then coming to the option 3 uptake of the dna through the transient pores in the bacterial cell wall yes guys so what happened during the heat shock so we will first what we will do first we will make the bacteria competent right so first we will make the comp, uh, first we will we will make the bacteria competent right competent what do you mean by competent competent means creating the pores creating pores right creating the pores in the bacterial plasma membrane right so then what we will do so then we will do the heat shock so heat shock will be given about the 42 degree celsius to the 47 degree celsius okay so then when we give the heat shock then the bacteria will be so where the dna will be transported from the liquid from the uh, from the liquid to the where it will go inside the bacteria okay the uptake of the dna through the transient pores in the bacterial cell wall so that is the correct reason so the next question of the antibiotic resistant genes no guys you all know that that is not the correct reason right yes so the correct answer is option 3 okay whereas the other options are wrong okay guys fine let us go to the next match the items in the column 1 with those in the column 2 and choose the correct option okay so you can go to the myasthenia gravis you know guys myasthenia gravis is a autoimmune disorder you all know that what is a uh, myasthenia gravis right autoimmune disorder so what happens here so our own immune cell started to killing the our own cell that is the myasthenia gravis okay so correct answer is the myasthenia gravis is a autoimmune disorder that is correct then coming to the gout gout means what so here what will happen so the metabolism of the furin okay 
so if the any defective happen in the metabolism of the purine so here what will happen the final product is a uric acid okay so uric acid is started to accumulate accumulate so then it is going to it is going to be cause the accumulation of the uric acid here okay so uric acid so it is going to cause the accumulation of the uric acid so then it is going to cause the gout okay fine so for this as answer one is correct so then coming to the fourth one muscular dystrophy okay so when you are talking about the muscular dystrophy so that is a genetic disorder okay guys muscular dystrophy is nothing but the genetic disorder fourth one is correct okay so then coming to the tetany tetany is going to be muscle spasm we will call it as a muscle spasm muscle spasm okay so it is caused due to the deficiency in the calcium okay so tetany is due to the deficiency of the calcium okay guys so then we have to search for 3142 okay where is the 3142 is there 3142 yes guys in the fourth option you can see the 3142 so the correct answer is option 4 where the other options are wrong okay guys fine so let us go to the next question okay so this is the last question so read the following statement carefully and choose the incorrect incorrect statement okay so option option a is any population has built in the variation in the characteristic yes guys so if you take the any population you can see the variation right in the population you can see the different species right yes so it is having the variation in the characteristic yes we can see the variation in characteristic according to the darwin the fitness refers to the ultimately and only the reproductive fitness for example if you would take that any uh, so any of the species is fit uh, so that is uh, growing in that region okay so that is surviving in that region means it should be reproductive it should be uh, it should be fit when we are calling as a, that is fit means it should be reproductive it should be reproduced to give the new offspring right so then only we can tell that so that is a reproductive fitness right yes so that is the correct so fitness refers to the ultimately not only the organism should be uh, fitness that should be reproductively fitness it should give the birth to the young ones in that region or that in that environment okay so that is the reason so that also correct evolution is stochastic process based on the chance mutation in the nature and chance event in the organism no guys someone think that this is the correct option no guys here you can see chance mutation in the nature not in the nature so that should be in the organism organism right that should be in the organism chance event in the organism no chance event in the nature okay guys chance event should be in the nature okay so that is the reason this option is wrong then coming to the last lemark had said that evolution of the life form had occurred by the driven by the use and the disuse of the organ right guys yes so that is by the use and the disuse of the organ so that is correct so lemark had said that yes so the lemark has said that uh, so that is about the use and the disuse theory right so that is correct statement yes so that's why the option c is wrong here right so option a and b and d is correct so let us see that so read the following statement carefully and choose the option with the incorrect only incorrect statement right so then option c is incorrect right option c is incorrect so that is the reason option d option c is the correct statement where the others are wrong okay guys fine so that's it guys for today thank you so much let us meet in the next video solution of the next neat test okay guys thank you so much